Hi, I'm Rachel Brooks. I am a muralist and a painter. And my journey as an artist began a long time ago. I grew up in a family of artists. My mother is a painter and both my grandmothers were painters. So that path was always kind of laid out ahead of me. Um, but I actually, after art school, ended up working in fashion for a long time. And just recently, a few years ago, have made the transition back into the fine arts world. And I am loving just getting my hands dirty again. My style still is greatly influenced by my time in fashion with its clean lines, color, and texture. I am currently fascinated by the idea of reductionism, reducing not just the human form, but the female face. People most often notice the lack of facial features on my portraits of women, most specifically the eyes and an emphasis on the lips. To me, the eyes greatly reflect the soul and reveal our individuality. With them, she is one, but without them, she can be all of us. And the slightly parted lips represents the female voice, which I think is so incredibly important, especially now. Each time I paint, I ask myself what it is that she is saying and what it is that she is choosing not to. Women's issues are a reoccurring theme within my paintings, but I am also inspired by the environment around me, specifically the Bay Area and our beautiful Sonoma County, with its coastline, its color palette, and its ever-changing landscape. Sonoma County is reflected in my work. I'm inspired by the greats Warhol, Rothko, but more importantly, the emerging female artists of our time. Painters, Heather Day, woodworker, Alexander Z, both Bay Area artists paving the way for the rest of us. Their body of work may be very different from mine, but I am inspired and impressed by its evolution. The best advice I was ever given was from a seasoned creative and photographer. She told me, to stop being such a perfectionist, to stop hiding behind my canvases in my studio and to share my work with the world. Because if I waited to be a master at my craft before I shared my work, I would not have room to grow. The only way to grow is to put your work out there to be loved and hated, to be criticized and admired. And that is how you become great. A friend of mine and master musician once said to me, no one really chooses to be an artist. Art chooses you. You just decide whether or not to accept that. So my style is greatly influenced by my time in fashion. Um, I love the reductionist artists and abstract contemporary artists. So right now I have this obsession with human form and with women. I think it's, a, it's something I've really been focused on in my body of work right now. So I've been playing a lot with negative space um, and with how I can simplify the female face, how I can take things away with still leaving her essence. And right now that has translated itself into women without eyes, with lips and a focus on the lips. People always ask me why they don't have eyes. And I think for me, it's because eyes really define the individual so it makes the woman one woman, not all women. Without eyes, she becomes all of us. And with her lips, the focus, I think for me it represents the female voice, which I think is so important right now. And in all of my women that I paint, it's as if they're about to say something. And I always ask myself when I'm painting them what it is she's trying to say or what it is that she's not saying. And I think that's really important, that emphasis on on what she has, on what we all have to say right now. Do you think that's an underlying theme in your work? Right now, absolutely. I think there's other themes. I think diversity and inclusion and um, women's issues in general are themes. That's what I'm playing with now. We'll see how it evolves and what the themes will be going forward. But I think in this, this time in my life, being a mother and in this time in society, I think that's just always gonna be an undercurrent of my work. 
Uh, influence versus inspiration. I think I'm greatly influenced by my career in fashion when it comes to my style and my aesthetic. Inspiration though, I mean, really, like I said, women. Women inspire me, their strength, uh, overcoming adversity. Uh, we have so much to say, uh, especially in the art world. I think that's very important um, for females, female artists, to really focus on that and, and to give each other a voice. So women inspire me. I'm also incredibly inspired by where, where we live in Sonoma County, and I think those colors and textures really influence my work greatly and will probably continue to influence it more going forward. All right, so the last question is, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Uh, in art or in life? Um, my art advice that I was given was great. It was by a, um, a artist and creative woman and she was in her 70s and she she told me to stop being a perfectionist about my work uh, in all areas and that the only way that you can get better is to put your art into the world and it doesn't need to be perfect before you put it out there because you're only going to learn and continue to grow if you stop living in a bubble and for me it pushed me to take that leap into really sharing my work and um, it pushed me to get into murals and creating public art and, and to not be that cliched, isolated artist who just creates and creates and creates and creates and never really puts it out there for people to love, hate, or judge. And that's how you grow. And I think that is the best advice anyone's ever given me. It's like, don't become a master before you share. Um, you will evolve by, by sharing and exploring your, your work. And where can people find more about you and your work? I mean, Fulton Crossing has a, a great um, section on their artists, on all of the artists that are here, uh, my website, which we, we can link to. And then also, I mean, you guys gotta check out Instagram. You get a lot of in-process, behind the scenes, a little bit more raw studio, uh, studio work and videos. So definitely check that out. And what's your handle? Rachelbrooks.artist.